we spent some time watching TV while we was gone because it was so hot. I know you guys was having cool weather up here, but uh, I was watching a, a, a news uh, uh, that was had a panel of people and they were talking about how much damage this COVID had for the world and the great losses of life and businesses closing and people still to this day not going back to their jobs because the government is doling out unemployment and all kinds of uh, benefits that keeps them home and the toll that it's taking. Part of the problem with businesses closing is they can't get people to work. And it's just a sad situation. They talked about the schools and how the children had uh, been so far behind uh, in their studies and what they not only hadn't gained for the time that they was off, but the amount that they knew, already knew that they had lost and it's going to have to be retaught to them. Uh, one of the things that came up was the churches. The churches in this country have lost so many members that just do not, did not come back after they were not allowed together to meet. And many of them are watching uh, services on the internet and, and uh, different things. And it just, it's just something that is so disheartening to think that people that profess to be Christians would let something like that interfere with their serving their God. This morning we're going to talk about uh, something that is very real, but I believe it is also something that we oftentimes neglect to understand what's happening to us as Christians. I know that there are many Christians and so-called uh, Christians that want a Christianity that asks very little of them. They're content to practice their faith as long as it does not interfere with their lives. And it does not call for a sacrifice. We want God to hear our prayers and we want God's ever blessing. That's the thing that we want as Christians. But we want to believe that we can get along with Christianity by believing what we want to believe and how we want to believe it. We don't want our Christianity to embarrass us in front of our non-Christian friends. We don't want to have a strict morality or talk about sin. And don't ask us to believe anything that's offensive to the world and to what they are professing now days, which is a lot of times unthinkable for us, isn't it, as Christians? to think about what even our own government, to think about what's going on in our own government that's ruling us and making laws for us. One of the things that I believe is the most dangerous to us is that we have a concept that we are able to defend ourselves against anything that comes down the pike. But just look at the attitude that we have sometimes about the things that are going on in the world, 
Maybe we are not supporting them, but we're certainly not objecting to them either, as we ought to be. What is authentic Christianity? What does that mean, authentic? Well, we know authentic means something that is real, uh, something that has meaning, uh, that guides us in the directions that we want to go. And I believe that authentic Christianity is taking our faith seriously. I know that we as Christians oftentimes will get into an idea that is this really real? Is the Satan real? Is he really there? We know that the Bible, we believe in the Bible. We believe that the Bible is inspired and God spends a lot of time in his word telling us and warning us about the Bible. We know Satan's presence has been here from the very beginning of creation. We know that the world got so bad that God destroyed it with the exception of eight souls. We know our God. We know he loves us. What could have possibly happened to people that it got so bad that God had to destroy the world? Have you ever asked yourself that? We know that God loves each and every one of us. He wants us to be saved. He doesn't want bad things to come to us. You know, so many times people blame God for bad things that happens in their lives. But they're blaming the wrong person. We need to be blaming Satan for those hurts and pains that comes into our life. And not God. What can we do as Christians to make our faith stronger? To make our lives brighter in the sense that we know what we have to come. And that is eternal life with God. But are we risking it by not accepting the fact that we are in a battle with Satan? We are in a battle for our lives and our souls. And for those that we love, we're in a battle to overcome. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13, it says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord, and in the strength of his might, put on the full armor of God, so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Our battle friends are spiritual and we are fighting for our souls and for the souls of the people that we love. The battle is not on a battlefield as we know it, but it is in our hearts and in our lives. We have an opponent. He has been fighting for since time began. He is cunning. He's strong. He knows your weaknesses. And he plays on that. We know that God says in his word that Satan has the power to do these things to us. And that's why he wants us to stay alert to watch out, to be careful, not to get involved in things that will eventually drag you down and drag you away from his son's church. 
the Bible says that he can appear to us as an angel of light, which is nothing more than deceit. It's nothing more than, than somebody fooling you and making you think something that is not right. And that's what Satan does. We need to be able to recognize what he's doing, but we also need to be in a position in our spiritual life that when those things come, that we know what to do with it and we know how to handle it and which direction to go. When it comes to spiritual warfare, we must have the Lord's strength on our side. And how do we get that? I think that if we don't know that we're in a spiritual battle, that we don't realize it, or we don't accept it, then we will surely lose our battle against Satan. When we live as we please and believe that we can still be pleasing to God, we are being deceived by the devil. When we think that there are things in the Bible that does not apply to us, we are being deceived by the, by the devil, by Satan. He's making you feel comfortable by where you're at and where your life's at. A lot of these so-called religious world beliefs that once saved, you're always saved. We know that that is a lie, that they've been deceived. It certainly is a glorious thought, isn't it? If we could have that. But let's see what God's word says about that. Hebrews, the third chapter, 12th and the 13th verse. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any one of you an evil, an unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it's called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. We must not take our salvation for granted. We must stay strong in our faith. We must follow our Lord's will in everything that we do. We have confessed to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and to follow his will. And that's so very important for us to be a, a constant reminder that we are, we belong to Jesus Christ. We belong to his church. We're part of his church. And we need to always follow what Christ's teachings are and follow his will. If we are not prepared to fight spiritually, we will surely lose to Satan. Romans, the 13th chapter and the 12th verse says this, the night is far gone and the day is at hand, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. It's absolutely necessary for us to have God's help with the schemes of the devil. We know that God has provided us his word, and we know what that says, and it's, we can be an encouragement to one another in fulfilling that battle that he has set for us. Ephesians 6 and 14 says this, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Fasten the belt of truth. We know that is want, knowing what the Bible says, being in his word, studying, in, studying his word, and finding out what the truth is. And also being righteous, being good, being right, in the right direction is what righteous means. This belt of truth 
it keeps us right on the track and in the right direction. It's the best weapon against false doctrine is God's word, is our best defense against moral deceptions, against counterfeit religions. We can use the word of God if we know what it says. It exposes the devil as a liar and an immoral deceiver. In the breastplate of righteousness, we are to live morally, pure lives, making our election sure. That is, that, that we have that hope of being with God forever if we do these things that God tells us to do. We will have a peace of mind and a peace of, and a heart that is familiar with God's word and how to overcome and what we need to do in order to be pleasing to God. And it's a great encouragement for us as Christians today in this family right here. Although as small as we are, we still should be a great encouragement to one another. When we know that we are right with the living God, it is that kind of encouragement, isn't it? To say that not only for our good, but also for the good of all others, and for not only the ones that we love, but the ones that uh, we are in contact with. You know what God says about us as Christians, that that's how the world knows that we're his disciple by the way that we act and talk and express our love and concern for them. Here's what the Lord said in Matthew 5 and 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. We need righteousness, don't we? We need to be right with God. We need to be right in the path that we walk while we're on this earth. We need to be right on the things that we tell people about how they need Jesus and how to, to have Jesus in their lives. In Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the 33rd verse, it says this, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Being right with God should be our highest priority. With our conduct, our ethics, our goodness, and our righteousness should always come from God's instruction. This readiness given by the gospel of peace also allows us to have things come into our lives that we are able to handle and not be discouraged and fall away. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the 15th verse, it talks about girding your waist with truth. And that, of course, is knowing what the Bible says, what does God say, and the breastplate of righteousness, and to shod your feet with the peace of the gospel. You know, our answer to our woes is always directed to where? To God's word. When we have problems, when we have situations, God always has the answers. Your shield of faith that allows you to block those fiery arrows of the devil. That's what God says in his word. And God knows what he's talking about. Your shield of faith. We talk about our faith and how important it is for our faith to grow. You know, we can never be in a position where we could not strengthen our faith to help us in those times. 
And that, of course, is God's plan for man. The gospel of peace prepares the Christian to be strong in the Lord as he faces the enemy's deceptions. The more we tell others about the good news, about the hope that we have through Jesus Christ, I believe that we'll not only build our faith, but it will also confirm our faith, not only to ourselves, but to others that are looking and watching. Christians are busy, when Christians are busy telling others about the peace that they have through the gospel, uh, we'll leave them little time to think about things that will take them astray. We need to tell others about Jesus and how he paid the ultimate price for all, saving us from our sins. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and the third verse says this, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. We can look at the lengths of Jesus from the very beginning, coming to this earth and leaving what he left, leaving heaven to come to this earth full well knowing what was to happen and how people treated him and yet continued to love and to care and to go to the cross to give his life that we may have life eternal. Ephesians the 6th chapter and the seventh, 17th verse, uh, it talks about taking uh, the word of God and praying always, uh, being watchful, uh, that we may be bold as we tell others about Jesus and the mystery of the gospel. We know that God's word is able to pierce people's hearts. When we see that link that Jesus did and went through, we should go bolder in our faith and in our belief in what God can do. The Apostle Paul commanded in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. So faith in Christ Jesus, as the Lord keeps us safe from the flaming arrows, all those lies and deceitful things and false doctrines, God's word will protect us. Our faith in God will protect us. Ephesians 6, verses 18 and 19. Praying at all times, God protects us when we pray. And Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7 says this, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, and let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul says there's two ways to stand tall spiritually. That is to pray often and to stay alert, to pay attention, and to know what's right and what's wrong. Prayer keeps our focus on God rather than our selfish desires, and you know that there's not a one of us here that doesn't have those desires. We have those desires to be happy, and that's not unnatural. God made us that way. But we have to make sure that those desires are regulated in the direction of God. Isn't it funny how often we've talked about praying, how important it is to pray, to talk to God, to let him know about what's on your mind and what you're thinking 
and what, uh, uh, what a wonderful God we serve that has made all these things so clear to us that we as Christians can know that he's there for us when we need us. He wants to talk to us. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to pray. Matthew 26, verses 41, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayer keeps us focused on God rather than our selfish desires. And when we prepare for temptation, uh, when it comes, it's not a surprise, is it? And when we know that it's coming, we can handle it much easier if we know that God is on our side and he always gives us a way out. Be sober-minded, be watchful, be alert, stay alert, and pray to God. First Peter 5, verse 8 talks about your adversary, the devil. Be sober-minded, be watchful for him. Know that he's there, because he prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. In 2 Thessalonians, the 15th verse says, So then, brothers, you stand firm, and you hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. So here we find that the Apostle Paul is telling them to make sure that you stick by what we have taught you, what Jesus has taught you, and by what we have written to you. You know, and that's the same charge to us, isn't it? We need to know what God's Word says. We need to study it. We need to, to spend time in His, in His Word. God's Word, it, it helps us to the point that when danger comes, when there is something that is dragging us down, that we are able to resist. We know one thing for sure, that God has told us that he will not allow a temptation greater than we can handle. But we need to be prepared for it. We can't just be uh, sit back on our haunches and not uh, taking action as God speaks. Again, that taking the whole armor of God. We talked about the breastplate. We talked about uh, the things that, that protect us from Satan. We want to make sure that we understand what that is. Are we doing everything that we can to prepare for those days that Paul talks about? And are we reading, are we studying our Bible, knowing what good, what's good and what's bad and what's wrong and what's right or what's true or what's false? We need to be worshiping God on a regular basis, coming together on the first day of the week. We need to make sure that our prayer life is at the par and never forget that great hope that we have through Christ. We know that being a Christian demands a full commitment to the Lord. Romans 12 and verse 1 uh, talks about uh, our bodies as being a living sacrifice, a holy sacrifice acceptable to God. And also in Corinthians, the sixth chapter, it says this, verses 19 and 20. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit with you whom you have from God? And you're not your own, for you were bought with a price. So we need to do what? Glorify our God with our body. I believe that, that uh, we should never make the mistake that if we let the devil have a foothold in our hearts, that we are certainly not pleasing to God 
and we're not doing what God tells us to do to protect ourselves. We should always keep that in mind. Ephesians 6 verse 10 says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. We need to be, have a strong trust in the Lord, a strong courage, a strong endurance, and a strong hope, a strong love, and a strong knowledge of God's word. And when we have that, we're going to be pleasing to God. The Church of God's Family, 1 Timothy 3.15, talks about our members, the family of the church here. He's designed this loving family, this church, his son's church, to meet the spiritual needs of all of us. And you know, God's arms are always open and are longing for those to come home to him. And we're going to give you that opportunity now as we stand and sing, won't you come if you have a need? <laughs> 